wire with 12 volts, it might drop. You'll see that shortly. In this case, we've got a massive drop of 10 volts. Bulb is hardly lit at all. If we put in a big halogen bulb and test it, we find we've got a ground, but suddenly our 12 volts has dropped to 1.2 volts. Why? Because we're loading it. We're stressing it. We're stress testing it. Suddenly, the resistance makes itself known, and we don't have 12 volts anymore. We have a tenth of it. We could also have resistance in the wiring too. It's up to you to determine where the problem lies. You can go down the harness and until you find 12 volts. That's usually the best way. So this scenario, we've got no light at all. We've got 12 volts unloaded on the power, but we've got no ground. When we see 12 volts on a ground, it means we don't have a ground. Easy. Put a ground on it, it'll work. How about this scenario? Zero on the power supply and 12 volts further down the line. Easy. We've got a broken wire. Easy. Must have a broken wire because it's picking up the ground because the ground's intact, but there's no power supply at that point in the break. How about if you have a really skanky looking ground? Don't think that it might be bad. In this case, it looks bad, but you've got a good ground, zero volts, because behind the nut is okay. However, what if the wire breaks? Suddenly we've got 12 volts, haven't we? Because when you have 12 volts, there's no potential difference. Current can't flow and it just sits there because it can't go back to the negative terminal. So this is a good circuit, nice bright lamp, 12 volts at the top, loads and loads of power. And we've got potential difference because we've got a zero volt return. And that is the potential difference calculation on the screen there. That is a good circuit. Everything's flowing in one nice lovely loop. However, how about we have a corroded ground? Got a voltage drop. Simple as that. We've got an 8 volt drop because we've got a massive resistor placed in the way. And it is just like a resistor. That is all it is, resistance. So we have, an, we have 8 volts and 4 volt drop. Simple as that. How about a broken connection? Even easier. Imagine this guy now. He's the negative um, sort of electrons that he cannot get back with his mates to the battery because there's a broken connection. So it just hangs around and manifests it as 12 volts. It's as simple as that. How about this one? Typical positive side. We've got 6 volts after some resistance. Again, go down the harness until you find 12 volts. At that point, chop it out because that's where your resistance is. That's one way of checking. Now what we're going to cover shortly in this is how to find it. But just a quick one, if you have a harness with, a, say, a broken wire, you've got 12 volts, just keep going down. Keep going down until you find the break. It's as simple as that. And there you are. Now, what I've got now is a little treat for you. I've got a stem kit, and I'm going to show you in real terms how this all manifests itself, and it's going to be much easier. So, 